good to be able to resume our our stats club meetings. Um, we haven't really met in maybe three months or so. <laughs> I mean, I know like technically it was like um, a little bit less than that, but it's been a while since we met. Um, and one of the reasons we cannot meet is that we're done with a special LPFC paper, or we're mostly done. Congratulations to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I thought like we could resume uh, with like some more introductory sessions for uh, there's a lot of like new people at Libre, right? However, there's always time pressures. And so in particular, I'm concerned about the um, bike conductor um, a deadline for submitting abstracts, which is um, March either 15th or 19th, depending on, they have two dates on their website. So I don't know which one to believe. Let's believe the first one. <laughs> Um, and so because of that, uh, I think it would be good for people to learn how to make experiment hub packages. These are like the, probably the, the easiest type of package that you can make in R and bioconductor. Um, but it still has to comply with all of the bioconductor rules for packages. So even though it's fairly small it's in the sense that you don't have to write like, um, many functions about it, or maybe a long vignette describing the package. You still need to do a few things. So we'll start with that. And probably after Hedia presents next week, um, I'll present on how to make um, a workshop package, which is another type of package that you can make uh, specifically for the conference. Um, so I'll probably do that um, on March 3rd. Then after that, we maybe we can go to, to some more introductory uh, concepts to um, well, basically help train new people with that, right? Uh, in our teams and in the Institute. So with that in mind, I made this uh, um, Wednesday. So there's a few different packages that we'll, we'll go over. Um, we'll need BioC manager to install, um, to install bioconductor packages. And we're gonna use like three different packages that are quite related in their goal here use these via cities and hub pub. All three of them are quite related because they're right, the, um, the goal of these three packages is to help us make a package. And specific, like they get more and more specific. Use this helps us make an R package in general. Via cities helps us make a package for bioconductor. Then hub pub helps us make a package for annotation for experiment hub. So they're all like, um, they get more and more specific. Um, so, this is not the first time I've talked about biocities. I've talked about it twice already in, in the in our art club. Um, um, so there's I'm leaving here you the videos and stuff to to dive into it more later. But let's let's start with this. Um, um, let's start with the use this package. So use this is like this uh, idea of a workflow package. So it makes it easier to, to do our related tasks. Um, and it has a lot of functions, but it would look at one of them here at the top is called create package. So this, this function over here is fairly simple. Just give it a path to a package you wanna create. Uh, there's a few other options, but uh, we don't normally need to uh, think about those. We just think about like, okay, let's specify a package path. Um, and so one of the reasons that I also think that Experiment Hub could be of interest to people at Lever is, for example, I know that KJ is on the call. Um, um, in a lot of our projects, we end up making a large process data object, or maybe more than one object. Um, um, and a lot of work went into making that object. And we want to make it easier for other people to use those objects later on. So, um, for example, on the on the BrainSeq Phase Two paper, we have this little website where you can download some of these objects. Um, but you need to know about this particular website um, in order to find it. Whereas, if you put it on an experiment hub, maybe more people will be able to see it, right? Um, also, by putting an experiment hub, you kind of make it easy for other people to build uh, packages that use your data as an example for their functions, for their statistical functions, graphical functions, et cetera, right? Or, or, or worships, for example. 
So we haven't made one for brain C phase two, but we could make one. And so today I'll, I'll play around with the gene level data to make one, uh, to just show an example of how you can make one. Um, okay. So from use this today, we'll mostly just use the create package function. There's a few other use these functions that we'll use, but they'll, they'll be more behind the scenes. Um, um, so that's as far as use these goes for today. Um, once you make the package though, uh, a package is like a, a directory with a collection of files in a specific structure with specific names. Um, but then um, it can take quite a bit of effort to get to a point where it looks a bit more complete. And so I made this package called BioCities based on use this um, to help you take that output from create package and use this and make it a bit more into a bioconductor package. And so in particular, there's this function called uh, package templates that you have to use after, the, after you created a package. So after you created a package, then you can use it. And what this does is cre it creates a dev, a dev directory for development with four scripts that will help us like kind of get it set up. So we'll, we'll be using this in a second uh, to make our um, to make our little package. So there's going to be like a lot of functions and calls there, but um, if you need to remember just a few commands, these, these ones will be the, the commands you should remember. So that is like for getting a package started. And so um, before we actually do it in practice, let's, let's see what we need to make, um, what information we need to make a, an experiment hub package. So they have this hub pub package that has two vignettes that are going to be useful for us. One of them is this one creating pub package. Um, and then another one is like, actually, how do you make that package more easily? So we look at the first link over here on the HTML link. Um, it's quite a bit of a guide, but like what you need for experiment hub. There's also a notation hub, but I, I'm, I think maybe only Geo. Um, in this call might be making an annotation hub package. That's when you make like, let's say you have a new GTF file. So for example, G is working on the chess project, so he can make an annotation hub for chess, right? But most of us will work in the experiment hub. These two packages, they need to have specific things under the data and the, or the inst external data directory. Um, so what do you need to have? In particular, under the inst scripts directory, inst is like, um, like something like internal, we'll have to make two R scripts. One for like, how do you actually create the data? So in our case, ours is gonna be fairly simple. We're just gonna download the data from um, uh, the brain phase two website and like just save it. Um, so, I mean, we could even do it without R at that point. Uh, the other one is making this metadata file. And so this is really the, the core of making an experiment hub or annotation hub package. You have to make a little data frame explaining the data that you're going to host. That little data frame has to comply with a few different rules. And so they even made some packages to help you check that syntax and all of that. Um, and so if I find it for below here, okay. So this little data frame is going to need like a little title, description. Um, the title will be important because that's how like people can query and find your um, object. It has to be a unique title among all of Experiment Hub. It can't just be like my range summarized experiment object, right? It has to be more specific than that. A bit of a description that uh, normally is like uh, a few sentences. The bioconductor version, this was made available of. So normally it will be like the current development version. Um, that's what this says over here. A genome version in case people want to query objects by genome, right? Um, what is the source? Um, so for example, maybe this came from a FASTA file, um, the URL of the source, version of the source species, so people can query by species. Taxonomy ID, which is like is a bit of a pain to find, but you have to basically look at this um, database to find the taxonomy ID for your organism. 
um, whether it's like according to one base or not. So like typically in R, everything is according to one base, but maybe in other languages it's not. Data provider, the maintainer, which is normally going to be you. The one that is very important here is the R data class. So like what type of object are you loading? So let's say we're, we're loading a summarized experiment object, right? And then the other one that's really important is the dispatch, dispatch class, which is like a function for um, uh, for loading the data that you're providing. So let's say you save it as, as an R data file, then you would use this. Um, then you would say RDA, or if you say if you save it with like the save function, and if you save it with the save of RDS, then you would say RDS. But those are probably the main two. Um, maybe you're providing, let's say, a bed file, or you're providing. Um, a big way file at that point, like there will be other functions for that. Um, your path for it, and then a few tags if you want to help um, people find it. They have to have these like colon C tags for, for the tags. So there's a few other rules here in this vignette. Um, and so at some point, you might need to like check it in more detail. But um, at this point, we know okay, we need to make a little package that has this like little script. That makes a particular CSV file that uh, documents the data that we're going to host. Um, so, with that in mind, let's let's uh, work into making that little R package. And so, I'll open the link, same link again. Sorry. This help of media over here. Um, they actually uh, looked at bio CDs and used this, and they were like, "Okay, now we're going to make our own little function." They made this function called create underscore. PKG, which is not the same as this other function <laughs> from users. <laughs> Very similar names, but not the same. And so it actually does some of the same things behind the scenes. For example, it uses the use git function from use this. Um, and so this function in theory just makes all the package structure we need. And then you just need to make, use this hub metadata function to specify that like little uh, like um, metadata that you need, right? Like the title, et cetera. Um, and then um, um, this function add resource just saves that metadata file in the specific location that they want, which is this NSX data directory, right? So they, they made up all these rules and then they made a package to, comply, to help you comply with all these rules. They made it like uh, maybe three years afterwards. So for a while, like, then. I mean, I have actually haven't used these functions of metadata and add resource because I've, I've done it in different ways in the past. Um, so that's all we really need to try to make our little package. So as you can see, it can be quite, they're trying to make it very simple. So let's, let's try it out ourselves. So let me open an R Studio window. And I forgot to check if I have the hub package installed. So um, let's do this create package. Um, I don't know. You have, in theory, you should choose a name that no one has uh, used before. So I'm going to see when no one has used that. There's other functions for checking. Um, so I just specified a path for it. Um, and so let's see what it did behind the scenes. Create a directory in my desktop called um, can you see these colors? Yeah. All right, cool. um, to create the directory, set it as an active project, wrote, created the R directory, created a description file. Um, you'll notice that it already used my information, but that's because I already have some defaults on my R profile um, for that. Um, and then it's telling us, okay, you need to describe it. Um, is like the link for the support website on Bioconductor. So I already created like a few different things that are like Bioconductor specific. Wrote a little namespace file, which is another file you need for our packages. Made like a, an RC project, which is nice. But then it made sure that it's like ignored under our build ignore. Um, then it asked if I wanted to set the project to that. I don't think it did. Then he used the use this use git function because it created a GitHub repository for it. Um, started version controlling things. Wrote a few different files. It created this R package file, 
create a news file. So you create a bunch of different files. Um, even created a unit test for it. And then it says like, oh, here it is. Go and open it. So I'm just going to close our studio. Um, um, mm -hmm. So here we have that hope uh, brain sync phase two directory. You can see it has a bunch of different little files with like all this structure. It even has the metadata and make our data. Um, so it did a lot of things for us. So now um, let's get started and edit it a bit more. So the first thing I'm going to edit is the description file. Um, Actually, this package doesn't exist on, on GitHub yet, so I'm going to use the use this use GitHub uh, function. Um, ooh, can determine the local branch. I thought there was a Git. Oh, it hasn't made any commits yet. Oh, I see. Um, so we can also see it over here on the Git panel. I'll just make a commit then. <laughs> I already have a little commit. I think now this function will work. Cool. So, um, because my laptop is already configured with GitHub, it knows that my username is Eliquialator, and then it made, made it uh, you know, publicly over here. Um, so now that we have our little package, just working with GitHub, um, it added the URL for it. So. So I'm making this commit so you, you can always look at the history later to help you understand what we did. All right. So the description file is like, okay, what does this package does? So let's say provide access to let's see, let's do. Um you can choose, you can change the license if you want. Um, you change the author information, but that's basically all we need here. Okay. Um, the, the description, what was the description? Oh, I couldn't see it because of the Zoom thing. So we need to write at least two sentences, otherwise like R will complain that you didn't write a paragraph <laughs> um, about the, what this package is doing. Um, You, know, you can write something like that. At this point, we have a complete description file. Um, now, in theory, we could use the BioCDs functions for um, giving us a little guide on what to do. Um, but because this package is already fairly complete, maybe we don't need to do all of that. Sure. So, um, what are some of the things we need to edit? So there's going to be this news file over here that we, we should like explain what we're doing, right? Um, and so I was just going to say like new features provided. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm not saying much here, but it's like the very initial version. Um, so that would be the news. The namespace file, we don't need to edit it by hand. We normally are going to use our functions to edit this file. So we don't need to worry about it right now. Um, the R directory, there's um, a little um, .r file that says like, well, describe your package. So normally here it says like, we can use the, we can reuse the same title we had. Um, over there, and that's it. Okay. 
Um, so that's all we need to do about the R file. Um, then there's nothing on the manual directory. Um, and so now that we edited that, that R file, we can use the dev tools function, which is uh, document. And that will like take this piece of information we have here and make a little file. It's giving me a warning uh, because I didn't remember this. It's telling me that we need to write a little value about it. So I'm just gonna copy the same sentences I have about the description over here. Um, so Leo, is this like kind of equivalent to like a function a little bit? Like, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it is. This is the same like rock oxygen to see that. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, pasted that uh, requires an author. All right. All these functions are useful to help you mm -hmm. remember where you're supposed to specify. So let's say here like um, updated news and documented. So, I mean, you, you, could, you could, of course, use um, different information if you want to. So um, that part is fairly straightforward. Um, so I'm trying to, I'm leaving to, till the end of the harder part. <laughs> so the harder part will be under this inst directory. You notice under X data, there's this like little metadata file, which, Right now it's kind of boring. It only provides us like the different things we need to specify, the title, the description, et cetera. So we're gonna make it a bit better. So let's go to this int uh, scripts directory. Let's start with make data. So this uh, is like, you're supposed to document how you created a file that we're gonna share with the world. Um, so in this case, it's gonna be quite easy. We're just gonna download it uh, from here. So we're going to copy that URL. Wonderful. Um, so just download that file here. Um, we can change the name if we want to. So I'm just going to say, um, I'm just going to add a basic face two to it. And uh, let's do that. So this would download the file, but as you know, this um, this command will, if I run it right now, will run like where my um, console is located. And so to make it like um, not specific to the directory that I'm working on, I'm gonna use the here package to put it under inst x data. I think that's where we're supposed to put it. Mm. Some just reading the documentation here. You're supposed to include a description of any steps performed. Um, so, should not see like. Let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. Oh, messed that up. Is this already like a publicly available package? What is a public available? Like, whatever you're making right now is the repository is completely public. This website? No, the repository that you just made. Yeah. It's okay. Or by default, it makes a public. Well, that depends. Yeah, that depends on your settings. I think. So here, you're just downloading a you know pretty big mail file. Um, so this was a bit of a boring scenario because like we already have the R data file. But let's say that um, um, uh, mm -hmm.
let's say that we mostly have a file ready, but we need to add some information. So let's say in this case, it's like from a spatial project or we have already um, fairly complete our data file, but like we had to fix some variable names to make them more understandable for the public, stuff like that, that could go into that script, right? Into that make data R script where you like are loading it. Um, so for example, um, here you just um, downloaded it, but let's let's add something to it. So I'm gonna load it. Um, um, so I just loaded this object. What was the name of it? RSC gene. So let's say we want to change the name of it. Or actually, I'm not going to, I'm not going to change the name. Um, let's just print what it is. Um, you can see it has like um, quite a bit of information already, but it has nothing on the metadata. So I'm just going to add something to it. Metadata, RC gene. Uh, I just add some fairly simple information here, like about where we downloaded it. Um, so now, like, if anyone like downloads this object later on, they can see like a bit more information about it, right? Uh, I mean, we could even say like um, And then we find like what was the paper we need to cite. Yeah. So stuff like that. Right. So you can make you can make some changes to it. And so now I'm gonna save it. Um, um we're just going to overwrite the file I already had. Um, and then just to keep track of what we did, let's add a bit of information about how we made it. Um, so keep track of how we made it and like because it's a pretty large RSC file, it's going to take a bit of time to to finalize saving. Um, so while that happens on the background, I'm going to open this make metadata file. Uh, <laughs> and so now here it says like, oh, you should make your script that makes that metadata file, right? And they just point you to some functions, um, and then they tell you like some functions that can help you make sure that that metadata file is correct. Um, so they're not giving us a lot of, uh, um, like a large list of hints to use. Um, so this is where we could use that new function we just heard about called um, pub metadata. So we could do that. Um, that would be one option. Um, another option is to reuse information from the past. <laughs> so I've made, these type of packages before. Um, and so if we look at the special LIBD one. Um, I actually just updated it and made a new make metadata file for the DLPFC. Um, so we can see here in the past, before that function existed, you had to make a little data frame that had all these different fields. Once you made it, you had to manually save it to the specific location where it was expected to be safe, right? Um, and then later on, you could use this annotation hub data, make annotation hub metadata function to check that is actually um, working well. So uh, right now, because I'm fairly familiar with this, I'm just gonna use, copy paste this code over here. 
Uh, but you can also do it with a new function. So let me just copy paste all of this. Um, cool. Uh, while that was happening, our, uh, our data file saved. So let me um, save these R session information so I can remember how I created these objects. Almost there. Save it. Let's make a little commit. Um, <laughs> do it on the make data one. I'm not version controlling that big R data file. I mean, we, we won't. Um, oh. I should, in theory, make a little git ignore to make sure I'm not, uh, I don't see it on the list. But I'll do that later. So now um, I'm going to say that I copied these specific lines. So I'll, I'll get a permalink for it. And then just say I might commit, like, Where I got that information from, you could of course use the new function. So this one over here says like where were our files. So like I'm just gonna call it like uh, ESP2. What is our package name? It was hub ESP2. And this one had like you can see it has five options because I was making a made data file for five entries. So let's just choose a single title. Mm -hmm. That's how like people that should that tile should be specific across all of the experiment hub. I think this would probably be quite specific, but uh, you can always check. And the description. This one had like the description of five objects. I'm just gonna delete the rest of them. Mm -hmm. You can, I mean, of course, write a, a longer description, be more specific, et cetera. Back up to very short, right now, the, the development version is 317. The genome version of this data was AG38, which corresponds to GRCH38. So that's okay. Source, uh, source type. Uh, this is not a GTF source type. I mean, we could probably change that later. <laughs> um, uh, I guess in a way maybe this, but I'll, I'll leave it. We can change that. I don't remember what are the correct values for it. Um, we'll say that our URL is our package. We could also say that the source URL is like uh, the brain sequence two website if we want. Right. The date. Um, so today is the seventeenth, twenty three. I realize I need to change the date on the other one. Uh, the species name is Homo sapiens, that taxonomy ID that I told you was hard to find. In this case, that's the one that already corresponds to the human. Uh, it's coordinate one base, data provider is us, maintainer is me. Our, our data class in this case will be summarize experiment. How do I know that? I mean, we can double check here with like class RSE gene. Actually, it's range summarize experiments. I'll just add that. Dispatch class, so that's how did we save it. We saved it as an R data file. So I'll just say that dispatch class is R data. Um, R data path, this in theory should match, like once you upload it to um, um, AWS on their side, you need to specify like what will be the path for it. So if here you can see like 
So like, oh, it's uh, hub brainsec phase two, and I'm going to create the brainsec phase two files directory. And inside of it, I'm going to put the name for our file. So what was the name? This name over here. Um, tags. So um, anything you want people to use for finding this. So I'm actually not using the correct syntax. The correct syntax was, was with a colon uh, to separate the multiple tags. So let's see, one of them could be brain sick. Another one could be brain sick phase two. Um, uh, LIBD. Um, what else? Mm. Let's just say brain, PLPFC maybe. Actually, this one is also hippocampus. Um, I'll use the HPC abbreviation. Oh, so with that, I'm just gonna save it here as uh, just the metadata file. We already had one, this metadata CSV, so I'm gonna overwrite that one. Oh, so let's run all of that code. We can see in our metadata file, uh, now it has some entries uh, specific to us. Um, it's hard to see that way, um, but we can now use this function if we provide the correct file name. Um, oh, all right. It's actually giving the real warning so I forgot this. We need to provide bi-conductor view terms for our package so that way people can find it. <laughs> um, so let's see on our files. Let's go to the description file. And uh, we can see here line 19 specifies the bio CVs. This is actually going to be an experiment hub package, not an annotation hub package. So that should be one of the views. What other views should we be using? Well, I forgot about it today live, but I didn't forget it before. <laughs> I did include a link to the BioCVU terms for a special IBD. So we can reuse some of these ones. So we know it's like homocyptian data, it's sequencing data, expression data. Um, so let's use some of those terms. Um, here. It's not single cell data. Um, so that, that might be enough. But what if you don't know any of these terms? How, how would you find them? So normally you would go, um, like if you go to the main Bioconductor website, you'll see here it says like discover all these packages. Let's click on that. And here it shows you those BioCVU terms. You can see it from the URL. So if you remember from our um, Bioconductor session, there's four different trees of Bioconductor packages. And if you can only be part of one of those trees. So let's look at the experiment data one. And we can navigate all the different branches of the tree. At this point, you can be a part of multiple branches. So you can be as um, specific as possible if you want. So for example, we're going to say that we're part of the Homo sapiens data uh, part of the tree. But you could also, let's see, a technology data, uh, sequencing data. We have RNA seq data. So let's add that one instead of single cell data. RNA seq data. How was it spelled? RNA seq. So we'll add that one. Um, so that way, like in theory, people can be more as more specific as they want. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All these things are case sensitive. So if we look at spatial data, you can find like the one that I've talked about, spatial IBD. Um, Lucas Weber, a collaborator, made another package. And a few other people I didn't know made some packages. <laughs> right. Um, so that way, like if you're a user that you, you can find. Maybe what you're looking for. 
So with that, let's see if our um, make metadata function tells us that everything is okay. Um, so oh. So it says everything is okay, and it even gives us like this like entry. Um, I know that we need to change the source type, right? It's not a GTF file, the source. Um, but in theory now, we can say that we completed um, Um, so at this point, we have a full back conductor package for Experiment Hub. It's um, all written on um, on GitHub, and so you could go ahead and submit it to back conductor. At, that, at this point, they will like run all the unit tests, etc. Or if you want to, you could use the BioCDs function. Um, to start like setting up like a GitHub Actions workflow to test it um, on GitHub. Um, I'm not gonna do all of that because that will take a bit of time to set up properly. Um, let's, let's check what other things we have. We have our test stat directory that will test our package of Brainsy Case 2. And there's a little test metadata here that actually runs the same unit tests that we did, which was on that metadata file, expect that you have to be true. So um, make a little vignette. There's a via C this function like use via C uh, vignette, which uh, helps you make a like a much nicer vignette. Than a regular one. Um, and so the vignette file is like where you document like all the functions in a package. This package has actually no functions, um, but you can document like a bit more like where you got the data, what it means, what are the variables inside of it, right? We haven't explained to users um, um, what all of these variables mean, right? So that would be probably the place where you would want to explain all of that uh, so people can understand that information. So even though we are, we're already complying with the minimum requirements for an experiment hub package, uh, I would say that you know, we could do a bit of a better job. Um, so this, does, this process did not involve a lot of functions. Uh, um, it does involve like knowing a bit of the structure of things and like where to find files you need to edit. Um, so hopefully this, the video from this session will be useful for you uh, when you want to make your own. And then I'll ask around about this. Um, I'll ask the, the hub -to packages what they meant this fine package to be or when to be, when for it to be used. Um, cool. Um, yeah, are there any questions? No, I'm gonna stop the recording in case anyone, you have more questions. <laughs>